Prime Minister of St. Lucia and member for Castries East, executive members of the Marsha Football League, staff of the Office of the Prime Minister, good morning and welcome to this handover ceremony for the Marsha Football League who will be participating in the semi-professional league in St. Lucia beginning Sunday, 10th March. Admittedly, I don't know if there's some sort of, you know, bias here, <laughs> but our first match will be on Sunday at 2 p.m. at the Mindelfield Park between Marsha and Barbano. I would now like to call on the first chair, Mr. Marlon Daisy, to offer some remarks on behalf of the Marsha Football League. Uh, good morning, Honorable Prime Minister, members of the Marsha Executive and Technical Committee Marshall Football League. On behalf of the players and extension the community, I'd like to extend my gratitude and appreciation to the Prime Minister for assist assisting us with this, um, with the boots and the uniform for the upcoming professional league. It will go a long way in ensuring that our team progress in the, in the competition and hopefully next year we'll be in the top tier where we'll um, you know, try to achieve greater things. And so on behalf of the team, the technical committee, the, the players, and at large the community, so I'd like to thank you for your um, generous donation towards the team and the community at large. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Daisy. And I know that the semi-professional football league is uh, one of Prime Minister's babies, amongst others, the youth economy being another. Um, and knowing that Marsha and Cash Receives has produced many footballers. I remember my young, younger girl days um, in, <laughs> growing up in Marsha um, and going to see many football games. So I really hope that this league inspires um, many more young people to take opportunities for not just recreation, but for um, football, for sports as a business, as a career. I would now like to call on Prime Minister Honorable Philip J. Pierre, representative for Castries East, to give some remarks. Prime Minister. Thank you very much, Mondi. Um, good morning, everyone. Good morning, members of the Marshall Football League. First of all, let me say to all the women of St. Lucia, happy International Women's Day. Um, I hope I have the right colors. So my, my purple is is correct um the what, what's happening this morning is symbolic not in terms of the the contribution or the donation or what we are giving the master football league but in terms of a philosophical advancement as to where sports should be in this country the semi-professional league is the first of its kind in St. Lucia. And what, it's, what it seeks to do is it seeks to create a livelihood for footballers in the first instance. What do I mean? I mean that footballers at some point are going to get paid for playing football. This is revolutionary. It's the first time in the history of St. Lucia that, that that is happening. It is a signal that the government and hopefully the sponsors have confidence in the young people of St. Lucia, have confidence in the discipline of the young people of St. Lucia. What can that do? We can create a whole industry in sports. Sports is an industry. And there will be cynics that will tell you it will not work. There will be cynics that will tell you it's polit politics. There are cynics that tell you many things. But the question is, just think of a community like Cassius East. Just think of a community. Just think of it. Let's just imagine and dream. Because life starts with a dream. When Julian Alfred was going to school and she was being coached by Twatine, she never knew she might have been where she is today. And, she never, and we never know she may be St. Lucia's first gold medalist in the Olympics. So let's dream. And we mustn't allow cynics and critics and envious people to spoil our dreams. We have to dream. Let's dream about 
semi-professional football. Let's, let's just dream about it. Let's dream about it. We start. We start small. We have two tiers. Marshall is in the second tier to get to the first tier. Then they start playing for some money. Just think about a scout or scouts from somewhere in the world picking up one player, just one. And I'm sure there is the talent for that in St. Lucia generally. Picking up one player and taking this player, taking that guy through, and he gets to play Premier League football in, in the UK, in England. Think about it. Just think about it. Just think about two or three players. Football is an international sport. We have the talent here. Think about the industry that can be, that, that can be developed through football. Think about the coaches. Think about the psychologists. Think about the people who deal in the massages. And the, just think about the industry that can drive. Think about the people who are going to sell in sports equipment. I want to congratulate Ari here for, for, his, 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 for his contribution, his involvement. And what has the government done? The government has removed VAT on sporting equipment to create to encourage further. Hopefully, we, 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 we're going to reduce the, the price of football equipment or sports equipment to be reduced by removal of the VAT. Just let's think. Let's, let's be... Let's think about the glass being half full instead of being half empty. I, I can tell you, that can, there be, can be the beginning of greater things to come for St. Lucia and by extension for for Masha, for the communities, and by extension for St. Lucia. So what you're doing here is basically symbolic. It's not because we are we we believe that we want to get publicity, but we want to um, reach out to the young people in Castries East and the young people in St. Lucia generally. Let us stop this attitude about you from the ghetto and your mentality must be ghettoish. The ghetto is in your mind. That's where the ghetto is, in your mind. Life was never easy. It would be tougher for some people. The government's job is trying to make it easier for most people and for all people if, if, if they can. Think about the football stars who were brought up in the slums of Brazil and Mexico. Think about them. Can't mention, I, they will all can mention the names I want. Those are brought up in the, in the slums of Africa. Worse off, and I can say it without any fear or favor, worse off than any place in St. Lucia. Worse off. Look, look at where they are today. If they had thought about being in the ghetto and the system and them fellas and being encouraged by envious people, people who are selfish to have that mentality. I don't want to mention their names. Look at where they are today. World stars. Global stars. They started in a little, a little town in Africa, in Brazil, in Mexico, in Ecuador, in St. Sal. In, in, that's where they came from. And look at them today. So I want the sports fella, the sports men and women in, in Castries East and in St. Lucia generally to think like that. Not, not everyone is going to achieve it. Everyone can't achieve it. But some of you can. And I'm very happy with these gentlemen here who are taking the time off to work and mentor with these, with these people, with these young men. Them, theirs is a labor of love. Because it's not easy. Because you're fighting many, you're fighting many battles. You're fighting many battles. You're fighting battles with gang leaders. You're fighting battles with people who think they're influencers, who, influence, who think they're influencers. You're fighting with people who are political. You're fighting with all kinds of things. You're fighting with selfish people. But what you need to do is, I need you to focus as a parliamentary and as a prime minister in Russia, my position has been clear. Politics and sports do not mix. And I have never, I will never use politics for my political aggrandizement. 
And I've been representing that constituency for, since 1997. I've represented that constituency. And no one can testify to me ever asking them to do things for me to get votes. I get my votes otherwise. So I just want to encourage you. I want to encourage the Marginal Football League. I want to tell you, let's keep our eye on the prize. Let's forget the division and diversions. This thing just put us off. The divisions and the diversions and the fighting for turf. This be focused. Our focus is for the whole, not for the individual. There is absolutely no perfect human being. Don't look for, then don't look for perfection. There's no perfect human being. You can't find a perfect human anywhere in the world. Why are we looking for perfection? Just be focused. I want to congratulate you. I want to tell you that today we are assisting, but anything that I can do within my capabilities, because the Prime Minister does not own the Treasury, within my capabilities, I will do. The government has started. We've removed the VAT. We funded the semi-professional league. We are going to be paying. I want to tell you today that we are going to be we are going to be repairing the Marshall grounds. We're going to be repairing the Marshall grounds. That should finish by the end of this year. But I'm warning. I am warning. Vandalism will not be tolerated. We spent. About a million dollars on the Marshall grounds already. You can't see, you cannot see it if you look for it. The fence was damaged, the toilet facilities were, were, were vandalized. A million dollars we spent already on the Marshall grounds. This time, we're going to probably spend a little more than that because you're going to be redoing the stands. But I'm putting the people and not the players, the selfish people who vandalize that the police will be asked to take whatever measures they can take to stop this vandalism. We cannot tolerate vandalism when government spends taxpayers' resources to be repaired. They, they do me nothing. When, when you destroy government facilities, you do nothing to me. I pay my taxes like anybody else. It's not me. It's not, it's not about me. Damaging, damaging the sports infrastructure in this country. When you mash up the fence and you mash up the roof and things, you do me nothing. I'm, I don't play any football and sports again. It's not me. You don't do me anything. What you do is you selfish and you cause, first of all, your community to have a bad name, and secondly, you deprive people of, use, of using these facilities. And then as we go out to look for sponsorship, I want to implore and beg the players to be disciplined, to behave like people who appreciate sponsorship, not from politicians, but from the people who are, who are assisting show some level of discipline and understanding. So thank you very much, and thank you very much for the Marshall Football League. You guys are, are unsung heroes in that they make a sacrifice. I know it can be easy. I've been around for a long time. I know what you go through. I know to get these guys together in any shape, form, or manner, and to tell them that this and that. I know it, can be, it cannot be easy, and you're not getting compensated. But you do it for the value of your country and but so I want to thank you. I want to wish you all the best. On Sunday I will not be there to watch the the first match for the lunch. In fact I was expected to speak at the lunch so I gave my speech here. <laughs> um, so I want to also tell you that the Minister of Sports is very 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 excited uh, about it. More has happened to sports for St. Lucia in the last two or three years than happened for a long time. There's there's gonna be a, a a process of going to be repairing playing fields, we've done a playing field in Miku, hopefully as soon as St. Jude is constructed, we're going to be competing in the National Stadium in, in Fieldfort. I'm going to repair it 
Um, we we did work in the middle field park. I told you about work on the Marshall grounds. We didn't work on the Darren Sammy grounds. We didn't work on Rosalie playing field. So we're going to be constantly improving the facilities in this country. St. So Lucia has been doing pretty well in sports. Um, the, we're going to be building the National Aquatic Center. That construction will start soon. So our sports, our sports game is doing well. So thank you very much and I wish you all the best. Thanks. Thank you.